Hello and welcome to Arizona Talk Radio with Rob Scribner, and this is a special presentation of Survival at Home and Abroad. Hello everyone and welcome to Arizona Talk Radio, and this is a special presentation of Survival at Home. In case we had an emergency or disaster or power grid go down, I want to go through 30 tips of what could help you survive such a terrible thing. And so I don't, I'm not doing this out of panic. I'm not saying, oh my gosh, the world's going to end or anything like that. But we could have a lot of uh, crises and some things here in Arizona might be a little bit unique, but at the same time, uh, common to no matter what region you live in. So uh, uh, what I'd like to do today is go through 30 tips and ideas to help you prep and be prepared in case we have an emergency or need to survive on our own. And uh, I think what we need to do is to make sure that we open our minds to realize that how life is today would totally change overnight if we were to lose our power grid. What would happen if we didn't have internet and we didn't have electricity and we didn't have anything to stay cool or stay warm? And uh, what if you can't go to your ATM and get money? And what if the grocery stores are closed? Uh, there's looting, things like that. And he's like, oh man, you can't even comprehend that, I know. But it could happen and it would happen fast. So today, please join me in reviewing 30 ideas of how to survive in case of an emergency. For our first tip would be right off the bat, start putting away some cash. Uh, in our case, what uh, my wife and I have to do is we have a very large, uh, one of those little ceramic pigs. And we not only put change in there, but we actually put cash in our little, uh, uh, our little pig, you might say. And just keep adding uh, fives, tens, twenties, one hundreds if you can do it. And just over time, get some cash because you will not be able to use your debit card. And most of all, if you don't have cash, you might want to make sure you get a hold of something uh, unique like gold and silver. Think something that's worth something to another person because not only will you need cash, but you also need things to trade. So keep that in mind. Make sure you have cash in your household. I don't care if you put it in a jar and bury it in the dirt. Have some cash. Number two, get out of debt. Now, I know that sounds easy. And uh, it can be, but uh, it you know, depends on your situation. But uh, here's what you need to think about is if a disaster happens, it all de depends on the magnitude of things. But if you owe money on a car or you owe money on a trailer or you owe money on your house, uh, there could or could not be debt collectors after you and they're going to be ruthless. And uh, so that's where we'll get into talking about bugging out. So eventually your shelter, if it's a mortgage, uh, you may not be able to stay there. Now, if it's a disaster going on and uh, you know the entire economy is crippled, uh, it could be that you could hang out and hold up in your home. If you own your home outright, that's great. Uh, but remember, your home is probably gonna eventually lose its water supply. Uh, it's going to eventually lose its power or lose it immediately. Um, it could be located in the city and this, in the city is not necessarily where you want to be. We'll talk about that later. Um, and you will also may be forced to bug out. And you probably heard that terminology bug out and getting a bug out bag and stuff. You may need to hit the road. Maybe your family has a place to go. A uh, uh, a safe place or a place where we're all going to accumulate. Uh, and uh, like Sherry and I, we have the option of hanging out here, but we have a mortgage, so we have the same problem you do. But we do have an RV located in a, a certain area, and uh, we uh, would maybe strive to go find that RV because the RV has some uh, things in it that would be a little easier to survive in. Um, with uh, limited resources. So yeah, uh, getting out of debt. So if you can get rid of those credit cards and you can get rid of all those uh, little things, car thing, uh, take care of those first. And if you uh, mortgage, well, 
it is what it is. Uh, keep it in mind. But getting out of debt is the first thing you want to do because uh, it it can get very ugly, and it would probably get even uglier uh, when things are not regulated the way they should be, and you could be in a heap of trouble. So number two, get out of debt. Number three would be gold and silver. I mentioned that a little earlier in the show is if uh, you're not, you need to put away cash. Uh, cash will have some value, but nothing will be good old fashioned gold and silver. So if you happen to have silver coins, that could probably help uh, to buy pure silver, pure gold. Uh, that's going to have value even in a disaster, even when the economy has gone um, into a, a you know, we're going to survive some way or another and and everything would be based on silver and gold again and so to have some would actually be your benefit uh, so having cash having gold and silver and i would also suggest having things you could trade now think about in a disaster what could you trade to get things that you may need that someone else has and it could be something to do with survival it could be water it could be matches. It could be survival gear, clothing. Uh, you'd be amazed. Uh, and, and in the future, some of the things that we're talking about, you could buy some, some of these things that we're going to talk about at a, uh, a Goodwill, uh, a place to get it really cheap when we start talking about clothing and things like that. Uh, but think about some of the things that would be worth trading. Uh, that would be very important. But most of all, Make sure you invest in a little bit or at least as much as you can in gold and silver because there will always be a reliable source for trading and buying things. Number four, try to move away from the city. And I know uh, once again that sounds, uh, sounds easy, but it could be tough. If you live in the city, which a lot of people do because of their jobs and stuff like that, unfortunately, uh, all mayhem would uh, start there. And the best thing to do would be get out and bug out. So uh, because what will happen very quickly is a lot of looting. Food would run out. There's a large number of people um, trying to just survive and get food and water and things like that. And crime would be at, the, at its highest. And it could be actually quite deadly. I would immediately, uh, as soon as you know the uh, situation is bad, is get out of the city get out to the rural and uh, even farther out uh, as soon as you can uh, because first of all you're going to need resources and those resources are not in the city so uh yeah uh, number number four let's not forget try to get out of the city number five yes this is going to sound kind of silly since we live in arizona but most likely you're going to head for the north most likely you're going to start heading towards Flagstaff and the mountains, uh, maybe even up to the northwest. And so Arizona people are probably going to be the worst about ha not having warm clothing. Yes, warm clothing. And I'm talking about good stuff. And what I'm talking about is like wool, uh, whether it's blankets, socks, uh, sweaters, things like that. One is uh, you can't go wrong with wool when it comes to staying warm. Now the other, uh, the good news is, is it's very affordable if you go to places like Goodwill and places where you can, uh, people, especially in Arizona, are probably getting rid of that kind of stuff and you can get a good deal on it. So uh, uh, buy yourself some, uh, find yourself a, a wool blanket and wool socks and uh, clothing and, and uh, good, uh, good uh, even underwear, things like that, to uh, be prepared for cold. Because uh, if you if you head up towards Flagstaff up north, uh, you're going to be up against temperatures you're not used to. Uh, it's easy to dress down. But uh, another thing that would be very important in uh, Arizona is something to create shade. Whether you're uh, carrying a uh, a plastic tarp with you which by the way would not last that long because the sun will just tear it up but um, some kind of blanket or some uh, shade protection that you could create when you decide to rest uh, shade is going to be precious just as precious as water so there you go warm clothing number six 
good hiking boots and comfortable shoes. So if you do not have good shoes, you're going to suffer something fierce, especially if you have to bug out. So make sure you have good hiking shoes, waterproof preferably, and good socks, of course, to go with those because you're uh, if you get your feet wet, you'll be miserable. And uh, the other thing I want to add to that is uh, keep your feet warm and dry and keep your head warm and dry. So uh, uh, to go with that, I'm going to also say make sure you have something to protect your head and keep you warm like a good wool uh, uh, hat or uh, something, scarves and things like that. Keep your head warm, but keep them feet comfortable and dry. Important. Number seven, believe it or not, gas masks. Yes, um, probably the most critical thing next to water is a gas mask. Now, it may only be temporary. It could be uh, where you're in the city and things like that. It could be a lot of fires, uh, which means there's going to be toxic chemicals burning and things like that. So uh, once again, uh, you can actually find good deals in some of this kind of stuff in an army surplus store and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, a gas mask is something that I, I actually haven't heard that a lot. And I thought it was a very good idea. So uh, some reason you come across something uh, where you can get a set for your family, um, I would suggest getting it. So uh, uh, it may seem silly. You may say, oh, but it could be just a temporary thing. But a uh, gas mask could be quite critical to your survival right next to water. Number eight, axe, shovel, and knives. Yes. So uh, uh, these are going to be critical tools. Now, you can actually go to survival stores and stuff like that and actually get combination of things. But you're going to want to be able to saw wood. You want to be able to dig holes. You want to be able to uh, uh, make your shelters and stuff like that. So these are critical, critical tools. A good machete, uh, especially when a saw blade on it, you would be amazed the things that you'll do with these tools. And uh, they're critical to your survival. And uh, you can shop around. Uh, I would suggest that you buy high quality. Uh, I wouldn't go cheap on these things. I'd get yourself a good survival shovel. Some of them have combinations of things that the shovel can do. Good axes. You do not want a cheap axe. It could be a very critical tool to survival for building fires and building shelter, and etc. So yeah, axes, shovels, and knives. Number nine would be self-defense equipment. Now, I'm not talking about offensive. I'm talking about defensive. And so uh, we'll be talking about that later. But things that uh, if you're going to be hitting the road or uh, getting, you know, bugging out, you want to look for deterrence and things about uh, one is animals would be one. And of course, people. And uh, yeah, you can't necessarily or, uh, rely on a gun. The longer that we're surviving, the more that ammunition and things like that would be precious. So think about defensive uh, equipment and tools to... Uh, uh, protect yourself from, <laughs> unfortunately, people and animals. Number 10, this is pretty important if you're going to rely on a gun, is ammunition. Uh, there's other kinds of weapons we'll talk about, but ammunition, this is the time to buy it. Do, uh, first of all, pick out your favorite weapon. For example, uh, I have several. I have uh, a th uh, 284 Savage. I love that rifle. It's kind of lean, mean uh, shooting machine. Uh, I have a heavy duty uh, uh, Browning 300. And uh, that's kind of like a uh, bazooka. And that's kind of an overkill and heavy. Uh, I also have uh, a Merlin, which is like a 30-30 Winchester with a scope. And that would probably be my favorite because of uh, it being lightweight, easy to carry and having a scope to help out with uh, long distance shots. And the ammunition would be fairly reasonable. Uh, the problem is there's actually some shortages on ammunition right now. So it's be critical to buy your ammunition now while you can. Because, you know, what's going to happen if uh, we go into survival mode, 
uh, looting and all that kind of thing, uh, you're not going to be able to get ammunition. So you need to get it now. And, uh, you know, look for your sales. Go to your places like Cabela's and your uh, uh, pro bash shops and stuff like that. And, and uh, different uh, sporting goods shops. And maybe it'll have some of it on sale and buy quantities of it. So there you go. Ammunition. Get it now. Number 11, compass and maps. Uh, when things go amok, uh, we may not be able to rely on our cell phones. Uh, we may not be able to rely on any kind of our GPS uh, systems or um, uh, you may run out of power, may not have batteries, things like that. So conventional navigation is going to be important. So a good compass and having maps of the regions that you uh, are familiar with that you want to go to, uh, I would say is critical because when you want to get around, you want to hit the back roads. You want to hit, you don't want to be in the populated areas. You can buy all kinds of little uh, devices and kits. Like for example, you can see the little uh, things for your arms, which are actually a uh, spare rope and uh, also has a, a compass on it. So, uh, yeah, and, and I haven't mentioned it earlier, but having all types of rope is going to be critical. Uh, nylon rope is my favorite because it's small, and light, and strong. So, yeah, uh, compass and a map. Number 12, a Swiss Army knife or something similar. Uh, this is one of those tools you look at and you go, man, this is a crazy device to have. But you won't think it's too crazy when you're out, um, when you have to bug out. Uh, these things will have every little tool that you can think of, from scissors to small saws to bottle openers to knives uh, to clip your fingernails to take care of all kinds of little things that you will not even think of. Uh, trying to open a jar, trying to open up a bottle. Uh, sheesh, it goes on and on and on. And the... Um, uh, of course, everybody calls these the Swiss Army knives, but they also have uh, other companies that make uh, different versions of, of uh, pocket knives like this. So check it out and make sure you get one, a Swiss Army knife. Number 13, probably one of the most important items is a good bug out bag or a good backpack. And you, they come in all shapes and sizes. And it's going to depend on the size of your body and what you can handle. But uh, if you have family members, maybe you just have teenagers or maybe small kids, uh, you'll want them to have some kind of backpack, but you'll need something that fits their size. Uh, just remember, you're going to be carrying your shelter, a tent, uh, your sleeping bags, a blankets, um, all kinds of survival gear, along with food and, and survival items and weapons and uh, and um, ammunition and on and on and on. It's going to, you're going to have to be able to carry a lot and you want to be organized and most of all, you want to keep it dry and safe. And it's got to be a comfortable bag, one that fits you well, one that also uh, attaches around your waist to carry some of the weight against your body differently. Uh, I would not, uh, you, obviously, if you're in a re uh, survival mode, you, you take what you can get. But really, for long term, go out and buy good equipment. Go buy good backpacks. Number 14. <sighs> Forms of shelter, uh, of course, we're talking about possibly tents, uh, materials like uh, uh, to make shelter uh, that help keep you dry would be uh, nice to have some kind of tarp or some kind of insulation. Uh, so yeah, make sure that you have a, a tent or something to make shelter along with rope and making sure it's something that helps keep you dry. I would not look at cheap tents. I'd put a little money into those and make sure it's a good quality tent. And by the way, it's a great excuse to go camping with the family. Number 15 would be clean water and filtering water. Uh, this is going to be critical once again. Of course, uh, you know, even if you're drinking rainwater, that could be a problem. So make sure you uh, get some of the uh, filtering tablets or purifying uh, filters, you can get little bags that you can hang from a tree and then run the water through a little filtering system. Uh, and you can also buy different kind of cartridges and different kinds of like thermoses that actually have a little filter systems in it. So uh, 
uh, getting clean water is going to be important. And, and even if uh, water up in the mountains seems clean, you still want to filter it because it can be parasites and things like that in it. So make sure you have something to purify your water. Also, this is going to be cri critical. Find something where you can boil your water. So make sure you're carrying something you can uh, uh, put water in and boil it. Number 16, lighters, matches, and candles. Critical. So you're going to want to build a fire. You're going to need light. You're going to be able to create a fire. And there's so many ways to do that. You could use uh, even a battery and steel wool if you had to. But having a supply of matches, uh, lighters, um, go buy a four pack of lighters. That's what I did and put that in my prepping uh, uh, room back uh, that we have. Uh, having all kinds of uh, candles uh, are affordable. They're nice to have, and they are, they'll perform all kinds of things for you, uh, most of all to provide uh, light. And uh, uh, anyway, and it can be you know, even helpful when building fires. Having a flint is important. Uh, I wouldn't rely on electronics too much. So even uh, having good old-fashioned wood matches, keep them dry, put them in uh, special waterproof uh, containers, and uh, make sure that you can always, no matter where you go, build a fire. And by the way, having steel wool is um, it's like a miracle stuff. And a little battery, you take a little steel wool and a battery and then just short it out, there you go, instant fire. So yeah, uh, not hard to do, not expensive to do, but having a means to build a fire. Number 17 will be flashlights and lanterns. And uh, they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, now, just remember, if you're going to get flashlights or lanterns that depend on batteries, then you need to stock up on lots of batteries. Uh, the best solution long term is to have something that's either crank or can uh, recharge itself by solar. And uh, they are these are all available, all shapes and sizes. So, uh, yeah, get out there, get some good flashlights, get at least a couple that can uh, uh, recharge themselves by either with a crank or with solar. Number 18, pretty important, food, stirring up food. So this is something that um, uh, one is bottled water uh, is going to be critical. So, uh, you know, you can find those, those go on sale at Costco's and things like that. Stock up on bottled water. And I want to remind you when we're talking about food, uh, keep in mind that you're going to need uh, to keep in mind your your kids and your pets. But uh, one of the things that we do is uh, oh, once a month or so, we buy a week's worth of dried food. And uh, we also have an RV located in a specific area, and we actually keep a week's worth of dried food in that too. So... Uh, in case we had to bug out and that was our destination, we know that once we get to the RV, we also have a su supply of, uh, of uh, water and uh, dried food. So dried food you can buy in these, uh, if you see one of the pictures in here in, in white there, uh, you can buy these little containers that are a week's worth of dried food. And they average from 50 to to $100, depending on what they are. They can be all kinds of meals. Uh, but the thing is, they're very easy to make and they taste pretty good. Now, if you think uh, if we had a disaster, you'd be uh, hanging out at your house for as long as possible, then uh, <coughs> this is a chance to uh, keep a few more um, canned goods, uh, fruits, and, and things like that stored up uh, so can, you can survive for uh, you know as many days, weeks, months as you can possibly do before you may be forced to bug out. So keep in mind, you most likely will have to bug out eventually. Uh, so you want to also have this, the dried food and, and, and be able to go mobile if you had to. But uh, in the meantime, if you're sheltering in place, uh, store up your cabinets with a few, uh, fine, you know, like us, we have a spare bedroom and have a prepping area in the closet just for extra food, extra water, um, all this equipment that we're talking about, uh, the crank radios, we have them. We're not, this is not something that I'm just suggesting. I'm actually doing this too. And it's, uh, I wish I could do it all at once. It can be kind of expensive, but uh, if you need to break it out for a while, um, do it. But um, 
the sooner the better. Number 19, this one is uh, something actually I've been learning how to do too. Now the very first per picture closest to me is my own garden. And I've actually been learning how to do square foot gardening. But number 19 would be learn to grow your own food. Now this is kind of a long-term plan, especially if you decided to stay in place. Um, but learning how to grow your own food is critical. But keep in mind, seeds is the key. So if you are thinking that maybe you'll be holding out in your own shelter and maybe even trying to grow your own food and keep in mind you got to have water and so uh now in, in a sense i have a pool right next to this garden so I, I i have a water supply but how long would that last and uh anyway but uh if you st still have issue uh, you know able to get water it's a little different in the northwest but no, uh, Arizona, uh, we can grow a lot of things, but we need that magical thing called water. So uh, keep in mind, learn how to grow your own vegetables, your own food. And uh, it's amazing. Our small garden that we have here that you see up to my, uh, right next to me uh, provided us with a lot of food. I was really surprised uh, what we were able to grow. Uh, we're actually enlarging our garden uh, to a different part of the property so we can actually produce even more. But most of all, seeds is going to be the key. So uh, if you're buying seeds, uh, buy extra seeds and store them because you will not be able to get them if we're in a time of crisis. Number 20, first aid kits. Yes, um, we always need those around no matter what, but uh, you're going to want a good first aid kit, not just a simple uh, first aid kit because Lord knows what kind of injuries we could have, especially if you have to bug out. So I would not uh, go cheap on this at all. Uh, find yourself a good first aid kit and keep a couple things in mind. One is how versatile is it? Um, how long lasting it would be? How much is, uh, of everything is in there? And also, can you carry it? Make sure that it's uh, a size that you can handle. So yeah, first aid kit, critical to uh, if you're staying in place, traveling, and if you have a bug out location uh, that you want to go to, make sure you have a first aid kit there too. Number 21, stock up on vitamins. Uh, you can do this uh, just through multiple vitamins. They actually have su survival my, uh, tablets you can see. Um, you can get a mixture of different kinds of vitamins, but just remember your eating habits, and especially if you're bugging out, may not be balanced. So uh, having supplements would certainly be helpful. Number 22 is radio. So you know when we if we lose our power or uh, our cell phones probably will go down too, uh, we'll be falling back on good old fashioned radios. Now if you get a radio, um, AM, FM, uh, probably uh, AM is the best stations to be able to get. Uh, and they're battery operated, make sure you stock up on batteries. But uh, for actually very reasonable prices, and I bought one myself, is a crank radio, which actually has not only crank, but also a, a little solar uh, charger on it. So no matter what, uh, under uh, no matter how long and whether I run out of batteries or anything like that, I will always be able to uh, listen to the radio for any emergency uh, broadcasts or uh, at least find out what's going on in the world. Number 23, communication device. So our cell phones will most likely not work and certainly not our internet probably. So uh, having a couple forms of uh, radios would be good. Uh, from your walkie talkies to uh, VHF, uh, whatever uh, you can afford, but having communication to the outside world and possibly uh, with your own party uh, if you're doing things where you're separated. So yeah, having a radio and communication devices. Once again, remember that you're going to have to ch have batteries and it probably would be a good idea to get batteries that you could charge up with a solar device. So uh, yeah, communication. Number 24, and you're not going to like this one, but personal hygiene. And uh, what are you going to do when uh, you run out of toilet paper and you go to that grocery store and then those uh, shelves are empty? Going to be a problem. And uh, so uh, there is a few things to consider that you could do. One is you can buy uh, hygiene kits, and that's great, but that's more to carry. 
But um, also, uh, one of the best suggestions I've seen out there for survival is uh, irrigation uh, bottles. Uh, I have a picture on the screen here of one where you can actually irrigate your personals. And uh, or, um, you know, there's so many, you know, there's going to be empty bottles of water uh, all over the place. And uh, if you can use those and put water in them, you can use that as an irrigation uh, system. Uh, wouldn't It's not fun, but certainly would uh, be nice to make sure that you stay clean in your uh, personal hygiene areas. So there you go. Make sure that you prepare. Um, if you think you're going to bug out, uh, these are things to consider. If you think you're going to stay in place, uh, stock up. Um, Costco, man, you can get, uh, you know, a lot of extra toilet paper and paper products uh, for very little money and really stock up if you really had to. Number 25, and I've mentioned this, but I want to bring it up again um, uh, more critical. Let's say you have your beloved pets, a beloved cat. What if you have a small um, newborn baby? Uh, you know they're going to have special needs, um, Similac, um, uh, different kinds of food, uh, dog food and, and, and cat food, uh, things like that. And any other kind of pet you may have, uh, will they be able to survive along with you? So uh, like uh, Sherry and I, we uh, when we prep, we also keep an extra uh, bags of dog food and cat food uh, in our storage because we do love our animals. And um, for our dog, which is a chocolate lab, we may depend on her for safety and uh, for alarming. So yeah, uh, your pets, uh, important kids, of course, uh, their food uh, needs are a little different uh, the younger they are. So uh, keep that in mind when you're prepping. Getting to number 26, sewing kits. Um, kind of look at this in two ways. One is you can get survival kits where they have safety pins and hooks and uh, things that you can actually make sna snares and stuff like that, but uh, things to hold your clothing together. And of course, a sewing kit to fix holes and stuff was, guess what? Getting clothes, can, uh, it's going to be tough and you want to maintain what you already have. Um, and some of them are just very simple fixes. Uh, a good jacket, it might get a hole in it or something. You can't afford to lose that jacket. So you, uh, you got to learn how to sew, at least basic. Um, of course, things like duct tape, <laughs> that comes in handy too. But uh, sewing kits, make sure you go and get one. Number 27, fuel, propane, uh, things like that, that you depend on for cooking or heat or light. Um, for example, uh, I would probably end up using my little propane uh, Coleman stove a lot. So I've stocked up a lot on the little uh, green uh, um, propane canisters. And uh, I should be able to hold out for quite a long time with a couple of cases of those. Uh, maybe you prefer butane, sorry, <laughs> or alcohol stove. Uh, those are a lot safer in a way. Um, and fuel, some reason you might be using a generator or maybe a, uh, want to have a little, be able to uh, you know, use your transportation a little bit. Uh, having spare uh, gasoline around is always good to have too. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, if you know you're going to be dependent on some type of fuel, stock up on it. Number 28 isn't so much an item as it is a backup plan. Yes, a backup plan. So let's say you have a plan. Plan A is you're going to stay in place in the house and things go nuts. People are going crazy uh, and you find it's just too dangerous to stay in your neighborhood. What could be a quiet neighborhood could, uh, you know, people that are desperate or work their ways out to find resources and maybe you can't feel like you can't hold them off anymore. Um, Maybe the climate, maybe uh, the disaster happened here in the Southwest instead of the Northwest. Maybe you was like, well, maybe we need to head up to the Northwest. And so the perfect plans can go amok. So be prepared to change to a, a backup plan, a plan B. What is plan B? Uh, for us, it would be hold out as long as we could in our house. And then we have our RV located in another place up north. Um, where uh, actually long-term survival would be a good place to go to if we needed to. 
it depends on the situation. It depends if uh, we had a nuclear uh, issue happen, or maybe we had flooding, or maybe we had a power grid go down. Uh, maybe we had an EMP where we just don't have power and uh, it's too hot to stay in Arizona. Um, that would change your plan. Your plan might have been just stick it out, but if it's 110 degrees every day in Arizona and you can't keep cool, you need to head north. Um, yeah, so have a backup plan. Plan A, plan B, maybe even plan C. Always have a backup plan for your prepping and survival. Number 29, which is actually quite important, surviving on your own as a lone wolf is not necessarily the best way to go. The main thing you may want to start looking for, and maybe there's even groups around that are already kind of predetermined, is you want to join a community. Uh, everybody has strong points and everybody has weak points. Some people can sell, some people can hunt, some people are strong, some people can hike a long way, some people are um, good at um, planning and engineering. Uh, some people are good at growing things. Some people are good at making things. And so uh, that can make you uh, more uh, powerful in a sense uh, in order to survive long term. So uh, keep in mind uh, to be part of a community uh, is actually has a lot of benefits. You, uh, it happens all over the world. And then there's, if you kind of look, even some of the pictures that I'm showing here, will show that different countries know the power of community. Take advantage of each other's skills and uh, you'll go a long ways. And finally, number 30, shh, it's a secret. Yep. So, uh, of course, this video isn't helping, but, um, you know, I'm not giving out my location and I'm not going too nuts here, but uh, in your neighborhood, I would not advertise the fact that you've been prepping. Uh, desperate people and desperate times will cause uh, people to do things that you cannot imagine. You cannot imagine what life would be like, uh, even close, uh, if law and order went to pot, if food was scarce and people are desperate. They will do anything, I mean, anything to survive. Hard to comprehend, especially Americans are probably the worst because, you know, we just we have it pretty easy, uh, but we lose our resources, especially electricity. We're in a heap of trouble. And then people, it it'll, it'll, won't take very long for them. And I mean, it'll be short. It won't take long at all for people to start getting desperate. And so the last thing you want to do is go around your neighborhood and say, guess what? I'm prepping. Um, not a good idea because guess what? When they run out of food and they run out of water and they see that you're living just fine, they will find a way to either try to become your best friend or take it away from you one way or another. I mean, one way or another, uh, there'll be no mercy. And so, uh, yeah, keep your prepping quiet and don't advertise it, uh, especially around your neighborhood. Um, yeah, it, it would, it, it's going to get ugly and, uh, you want to protect your family and stay healthy, keep food in your belly and wait it out and see what happens. But yeah, this is our secret people. So uh, uh, I'm still on number 30 here. Uh, what I want to do for the rest of the show is to do a little bit of commentary a little bit. Uh, and uh, I want to, I hope these 30 things are helpful. I'll probably hit on a couple of other small things during the rest of the show, but uh, my top 30 tips is right there. And once again, this is our secret. Well, I know I just reviewed 30 tips of how to survive and, 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 and get through uh, hard times uh, by prepping and being prepared. And I know some people say, well, I don't want to, uh, I'd rather be dead anyway, or, you know, um, but it's in our natural, I don't know, uh, it's in our genes, you might say. <laughs> and uh, uh, to survive. And so uh, I want to go with the word hope. And I, I know that uh, sounds easy to say right now, but uh, humans tend to want to survive. And uh, 
anyway, so it's going to be rough. I think the hard part is to comprehend what people are evil people are capable of and desperate people. Uh, a desperate person may not be necessarily evil, but will do what's necessary to protect their family. And you know those bonds of family are pretty strong. Uh, I think some people would definitely be willing to kill and steal for it. Uh, the problem is a lot of them don't know how to survive. And so we're going to see a lot of people suffering, a lot of people probably uh, suicides, and uh, see some real ugly people. And you're going to have to be willing to stand up for surviving, and which means kill or be killed or things like that. And and I know everybody wants to you know, be passionate and help one another, but that may not be you may not be capable, especially up front. It's not until maybe you discover a community uh, to um, to uh, help prolong uh, survivability, depending on what the issue is. That's the big thing. That's why we always have a plan A, B, or C. We don't know what it could be. It could be a uh, uh, just a, a a normal disaster. It could be a war. It could be a uh, uh, attack on our grid, terrorism, natural disasters, um, earthquakes, volcanoes, um, God, asteroid, uh, and and a lot of these things will you know it could happen in another country, another place, but it could still affect us. Uh, volcanoes could, if we had some major eruptions in several places at the same time, could actually change our climate. Of course, we have climate change. We could have the Earth uh, change its axis. Uh, I, I didn't say that right, but it change its angle uh, or flip. Uh, who knows? We could have a solar flare. Could be lots of things. And no, I'm not dwelling on gloom and doom. But uh, if it's survivable, people tend to want to try to survive. And so, you know, uh, one thing I didn't do a lot of emphasis on is weapons. And uh, you got to be kind of smart about that. I mean, there's uh, people that definitely have like the assault weapons and things like that. Uh, not really my cup of tea, but I could certainly see how important they are. I am a hunter. I've been a hunter for years. So I do have several guns or rifles and I have several shotguns. And uh, I don't own a handgun. Uh, perhaps I should. I, I'm not against them. Just hasn't been my cup of tea. But uh, what I can do is make sure I pick out the best one, the one that I can uh, depend on the most, and have a backup. So my, uh, I probably uh, uh, make sure I have lots of shotgun shells. Uh, one is for defense. Two is for certain types of hunting. Um, and the uh, ammunition is fairly reasonable uh, the, and easy to operate. Uh, then I have lightweight rifles like 3030 Winchester or Merlin, uh, 284 Savage, uh, lightweight, kind of a, you know, good for all, kind of like a 30 odd six. And then I have a bazooka rifle, a, a Browning 7mm Magnum, um, 300, and it's uh, it's a beast. Uh, it doesn't make sense to use, and if I fired it, half the uh, half of Arizona would hear it. So uh, not a real practical gun and is very heavy to carry. So these are things to think about. And, uh, you know, I really a lot of it will come down to food and water and uh, uh, perhaps even air, you know, having an air mask will come in handy. You just, you know, I hate to go through all this trouble and find out that for the first 24 hours, we need to protect our, our breathing because we won't last long if you can't protect your breathing. You can go about three days without water, <clears throat> but breathing, yeah, that's kind of right <laughs> at the second. So those are the things to consider. Now, I, once again, I don't want to sit here and go talk about gloom and doom, but there's nothing worse than having something happen and then you go, man, I should have I should have been a little bit prepared. Even if we're just down for a week or two, can you even you know survive two weeks without power, um, and uh, you know when the power is out, there's no fuel. The pumps won't work. Um, the stores can't refrigerate food. Um, a lot of 
things will be out of whack. And so, uh, you know, at least any, if anything, just try to go for the short term right, of two to four weeks without power and uh, make sure you have enough food and water to survive. Uh, if you're in a cold area, make sure you have extra blankets, um, extra clothing, sleeping uh, to stay warm, cover your heads because your heater is probably not going to work. And you certainly don't want to build a fire in your house, but uh, maybe you can in your backyard or something. But uh, uh, heat could be a problem in places like that. Um, getting heat and where I live, uh, heat's not a problem, it's staying cool. So yeah, what are you going to do? So those things I, I, I wanted to talk about and touch on uh, before the show was over. Uh, once again, I don't want to put anybody in a panic mode. Uh, I just want to see everybody prepared for either lightweight disasters or heavy duty. Um, it's different in every region. If you're near the coast, could be an issue, tsunamis, things like that. Um, could be a while before you could get help. And uh, uh, yeah, prepping would definitely be an ideal thing to do. So one of the things I wanted to do is, uh, is ask you guys to leave in the comments and share your stories about what you're doing about prepping and your ideas. Uh, do you have a plan A, B, and C? Uh, do you plan on staying in place uh, why or why not uh, are you located in a place that you should be concerned uh, what are some things that maybe we didn't cover in the 30 tips in this show um, that'd be great now i'm not looking for I, I don't need trolls i'm looking for constructive feedback and people that watch shows like this also like to read the comments and i'm asking in the comments to uh, help each other um, when disaster happens, we may not be so eager to help each other. But uh, right now, uh, as a community, let's uh, share our stories, share our ideas, share about certain things that you think everybody should have to survive, uh, short term or long term, and uh, give us your feedback. We'd appreciate that. For those of you who know me, I'm Rob from uh, Arizona Talk Radio, and uh, I'm actually uh, talking from Arizona. Now, I'm also from the Northwest, so I've lived in the Evergreen State in Washington and Oregon. And uh, I've noticed, and one thing, I t and I haven't been in the Midwest, uh, that uh, uh, would be new to me. And of course, uh, also down by the Gulf states and stuff like that. That would throw me a little. So uh, the one thing I guess I would suggest is if you're in a region like ours where it's hot, um, summers are extremely hot and then for eight to nine months is pretty reasonable. And uh, so uh, uh, we have different needs here. Uh, if we're uh, bugging out and we're going cross country and things like that, we do have to deal with uh, some critters that you wouldn't have to deal with up in, in the north. Of course, up in the north, you got bigger critters that you have to deal with like um, bear and cougars and um, uh, stuff like that. So. Uh, uh, Everybody's got their own challenges. So I think what I want to make sure that we talk about is our climates is here in Arizona, heat is an issue. Shade is an issue, and of course, water. And uh, uh, Arizona is quite magical when it comes to growing things as long as you have water. Uh, however, uh, we do have some interesting critters like scorpions and uh, rattlesnakes and black widows and things like that. Uh, of course, other regions, other states have their issues too. Uh, interesting, uh, uh, you know, like I don't have to deal with alligators here, but uh, you certainly would in Louisiana and possibly in Florida. Um, and of course, other kinds of snakes and stuff like that that I wouldn't even recognize as being poisonous or safe uh, as because I'm not used to that region. So when you're uh, considering your bug out or your plan B or where you're going to go, I guess another thing is make sure that you study the region and understand what you need. If you're going up to cl colder climates, uh, do you have the right kind of clothing? Do you have the right kind of shelter? Uh, do you have the right kind of shoes? Um, can, you know, that's a big factor. We're down here, uh, you know, a lot of the shelter's good too, but it's more about the shade and protection from the critters. Um, sh shade, water, you're gonna go through much more water down here 
can you supply yourself enough water to maintain for a while here as opposed up to the northwest where the uh, rivers are rampant <laughs> you're not finding it not here uh, if you're in Arizona maybe you want to locate yourself more towards some of the reservoirs or possibly uh, we do have some rivers um, that uh, you know unfortunately most of them are controlled by the reservoirs but um, that's our water sources uh, I would suggest still heading north if we're in uh, Arizona. Uh, now in California, along the coast, you know, one of the biggest problems they may have is earthquakes and tsunamis. And uh, so a very large population of people would be hurt and heading inland and uh, uh, could be quite a factor um, and wouldn't necessarily cause us to go into survival mode here um, but a combination of something like that and then a grid problem, uh, now, you know, you, now you got a lot of people have lost everything, including their prepping gear, and desperation. And uh, yeah, those are the things to keep in, in mind. Now, I, I, I you know, I, I want to make sure that I, I, I throw out faith. Uh, and no matter what we go through, faith is important. And uh, I'm not going to minister here all that stuff. Uh, I'm not an atheist. Uh, doesn't mean I just I just believe what will be will be. I also believe that there's you know cause and effect for things, and also that uh, smart uh, spiritual people um, can survive just well. In fact, it will probably be necessary in a world like that. So uh, just you know, you say, oh my gosh, how could God let this happen to us? Uh, you know. Um, it's a volatile world, and uh, it's always going to be important that we have good people, good faith, and community. And uh, uh, Arizona can, I mean, w when there isn't the desperation going on, are very happy and, and commutative people. Uh, however, I just, once again, I know that none of us can comprehend just what people are capable of doing, and that's a little bit scary. So we're getting down to the end of the show. And uh, of course, this is a uh, AZ Talk Radio, which is an hour show. And I wanted to remind you where you can listen to our all of our other programs. We have several with some of them are about business, some of them are about jobs, all kinds of stuff. And so Arizona Talk Radio talks about Arizona, but also throughout different regions. Uh, we're also syndicated on Good Talk Radio. Uh, we actually all fall under what's called the Cutting Edge Radio Network. So yeah, if you want to catch our show um, and, and our other shows, we have a YouTube channel, Facebook. Uh, you can catch us on uh, uh, our podcast. Uh, yeah, with lots of sources. And we uh, love to hear from you. So feel free to send us messages. Feel free to give us comments. And we'd love to hear from you. Arizona Talk Radio is designed to be community oriented, uh, but without all the bells and whistles of like regular, regular sta uh, radio stations will drive you crazy. And uh, you never know what kind of guests and kind of partners we have going on in the show. I do know we're planning on uh, doing some more work about uh, uh, employment and businesses. And we're also planning to do a show coming up about um, uh, swimming pools and children and uh, some of the uh, challenges with that and uh, which I, I have that problem too we have a little pool and when the grandkids come over it's really scary sometimes you got to keep your eye on them so uh, yeah a, a pool can be a wonderful thing but can be a very dangerous thing too at the same time and it takes a lot of common sense which falls into this whole show which is common sense and uh, once again I'm not dwelling on gloom and doom, but I sure hate to be one of those people going, what if, what if I, uh, you know, if I would have prepared for this, if I would have had a few cases of water, uh, what if I would have had a, maybe a week or two or three weeks worth of dried food? And uh, how am I going to feed my pets? And how am I going to take care of the baby? Um, how am I going to stay warm? How am I stay cool? How am I going to get shade? Um, how am I going to protect myself? I mean, you know, a guy could smash through my door and I couldn't do a thing about it. Um, and I got to admit, I'll bring a little politics into this. Having our Second Amendment uh, to bear arms uh, is not only critical for us to have now, 
but may be very critical that we all have something to protect ourselves and our families in, in the case of crisis and certainly in war. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I know people may not like guns and things like that, so don't own one. Don't don't get one. Um, we hope that everybody uh, that gets one, which is usually licensing and stuff like that, are reasonable and uh, smart people that use common sense and safety. So, uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So I want to thank you very much for listening to Arizona Talk Radio. I hope this prepping show was helpful to you. I highly recommend you do it and maybe do it in stages. But, you know, I hate to be halfway through your stage and it is disaster actually happened. So I would say that you might you want to probably be timely and uh, prepare yourself and ask yourself, do you want to do this for a short term survival, uh, midterm survival or long term survival? I mean, some people are building shelters. Some people are uh, making panic rooms. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, you can take it to any level you want, but you're going to have to use common sense and also use what resources are available to you. Uh, you won't be digging holes here in Arizona because, uh, first of all, we have hard pan. So there's no sh uh, underground shelter going on in this property. So, uh, yeah, anyway, those are the things to consider. But once again, I want to thank you for listening to Arizona Talk Radio. I want everybody to be safe. You can check us at aztalkradio.com. Uh, that's where our podcast is located. Uh, if you have podcast software on your cell phone, you can listen to us that way. Or go to goodmusicradio.com and listen to our shows there. We play on a regular basis. Check the schedules and you can find us. And we have several, several shows. So once again, thank you. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye now. Hey, thank you for listening and watching Arizona Talk Radio. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We'd really appreciate that. Till next time, bye now.